Welcome to the Road to Redemption podcast with your host, Cam Williamson. Each week, Cam sets out to shatter the labels and stigmas associated with mental health awareness by giving life lessons and raw overviews of events happening around the world. All right, guys, welcome back to this episode of the Road to Redemption podcast. I'm, as always, your grateful host, Cam Williamson. Fantastic to be back with you. Today, we are going to talk about making better decisions, right? As someone who hosts the Road to Redemption podcast, meaning that I have things that I've needed to redeem in my life, that means what? I've made some poor choices in my life, right? So much of my teens, early to mid-20s, was spent morning afters, hours after, moments after situations going, why did I do that? Why, why, why? I've never intentionally made a bad decision. I've messed up plenty of times in my life, but I have never gone, that's a bad choice, let me do that. Right? That's not how most humans work. So why do we make the decisions that we make? We've talked about it, especially recently. It's been said many times that the thoughts you have today were the thoughts you had yesterday and will be the thoughts you have tomorrow and next year and 10 years from now if you don't actively change them. What is a common known fact now about our brains that we did not know even 50 to 100 years ago? We have something in our brains called neuroplasticity. That means that your brain has the ability and is changing at every single moment. If you choose it to, if you choose for your neuroplasticity to stay the same and all your neuro circuits inside where formerly we looked at things as chemical imbalances like depression and uh, anxiety and stuff, we looked at them as you have a chemical of dopamine, serotonin imbalance somewhere where now we know it's more your neurocircuiting, the energy that flows through your body and your brain and your limbic system that is all tying together to give you a present moment and present you with decisions to make. Now, some of us, especially when we come from recovery and stuff like that, we feel like we've lost our sense to decide for ourselves. Sometimes substances, routines, habits take over and we lose that ability to feel like we are in control. But understand that's exactly what it is. You feel like you've lost control. You have not lost control. You may be struggling to find your confidence and to find your voice even inside your own head, but that is the problem we are going to fix today. Okay. When we're presented with stressful times in life, as an addict, I know that hard times used to be key moments of excuse for relapse and poor behavior. Well, I can justify it because if I can rant and rave long enough, then you'll understand that I'm so upset and I'm yelling and I'm screaming and I'm very emotional about whatever situation's happening. What's happening in that moment? I'm training my brain that this is the way we respond. When things go wrong, we go haywire. Okay. So we do that. Nothing really helps. And then say you relapse. Or if you're in active addiction, you go and you use. Well, then you're teaching your brain that this manic state that you're in will lead to comfort. Nurturing in the end. By... Flipping out, getting all emotional, not being able or even trying to control these emotions at all. And then you dampen them or numb them completely with a substance. If your thing is not substances and maybe you have a temper, you have short patience, you get easily frustrated or you're on the other side of the spectrum, you get very quiet. You're disassociative. Um, Disassociation is big. It's something where when conflict arises, people just simply pull away. They, they can't really be of assistance to help in a situation. They don't really seek to be. And oftentimes this stems from poor um, self-esteem, right? They don't see themselves as somebody worthy of stepping in and being helpful. But 
it can cause a lot of issues, especially in our relationships. When things happen with our children, when things happen around the house, you want to feel like you have someone who's going to stand beside you and make a combined effort. If you as a person don't have the ability to know how to emotionally regulate yourself and make the best decision that you can, you can't always make the right decision. But if you can stay calm enough, even if that's not your nature, that's not what you've done every day before listening to this video, you can change it now by understanding one thing, neuroplasticity. Every single time something is about to set you off and you're about to go down a rabbit hole of anxiety, depression, anger, impulse control issues, you can find that moment. It takes training. This is what mindfulness teaches us. When you make it a practice to shut down the sense, uh, sensory system, shut your eyes, turn off loud noises and stuff like that, and you allow your brain to go, you'll realize a lot like what we talked about yesterday or last episode in the shadow self, which is you'll notice there's a lot of chaos in there. The key is you don't identify with it. Where neuroplasticity really starts to take place is in the identity. When you are sitting in a stressful situation and you go, why is this happening to me? Our brain is saying something's happening to us. Survival mode is necessary right now. Fight or flight. And then what happens? Our vision physically changes. We lose some of our auditory abilities. Our thinking isn't necessarily rational. Our heartbeat starts to rise. Our adrenaline rises. This is going to cause you to make decisions that if you were calm, you may not have made. So, every single time your kid does that thing, that pisses you off, that you know you're they're not supposed to do, they know you're, they're not supposed to do it, you've told them three times, and now they're about to... If you can stop and go, this is more about me wanting to be heard, me wanting to feel respected, and me wanting to feel like I have control of this situation, that's why I'm so angry, because I don't want anyone to get hurt. I, and look, this now this is this calming that's coming over, and what? Your brain is changing. Because 20 seconds in the other reality, I'm flipping out and I'm up here and I told you, blah, 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 blah. But 20 seconds in this new reality, my brain isn't asking, well, what the fuck are we doing? We don't do this. It's just going, oh, okay, we're calm. Why, blah. And then you can kind of notice the internal dialogue switches to, whoa, this is weird. This feels better. And then you notice, oh, look, th this situation is actually handling itself. My kid is calming down. They're doing what I want them to do. The flat tire is not that big of a deal. The checking account balance will get itself figured out or whatever the situation you're facing is. That's causing you to get way up here and it's ah, da, 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 or causing us to get way down here where fuck it. Nothing's worth even trying because life is too hard. Nobody gives a shit anyway, right? Every, every, the neighborhood's gone to shit. We're all, you know, we're right up on the end of days. What's the point, right? Well, if you think that way, remember, your brain is not going to ask, is that valid? Should we be feeling this way? It's going to take your word for it, and it's going to put your body into panic mode. When we go into panic mode, that's when we suffer. We suffer internally when we're in survival mode, unnecessarily. Because then we start playing the what if game. Well, what if the worst situation happens to me? What if all these people really don't care about me? What if no one ever will listen to me? What if I never am respected in life? And you ask all these wild questions that then makes you look at everybody as negative, harmful, and enemy when there's really no reason for that. Especially if we're talking about people that we love every day. Every time we approach each other, we want to approach each other in kindness and love if we're choosing to associate with one another. So you being you, even if you're not being the best form of you, if that's setting me off, I owe it to you to be the best version of me to pull you back up. I can't do that 
If I'm going to allow you to bring me down here and make bad decisions with you, then I'm just allowing everyone to come down a little bit. I like to think that if you listen to this show, you're some sort of leader. You you lead in your family in some way. Maybe you run a business. Maybe you lead um, a channel like I do. Maybe you have a brand. Maybe whatever your thing is, I feel like you're not this dedicated to self-improvement, mental health, and self-assessment, and you're not impacting greatly the people around you. I think you definitely are. So remember that. It was something I lost sight of. I have a great impact on people around me. The way that I speak, the way that I am, people notice it and they take notes on it and they tend to kind of shift around that. It's just something that I've noticed. So when I'm down and I'm being very negative and I'm allowing myself to gossip or drone on about shit that I can't change, I notice that other people start to feel like that's okay to do. And then if I come to my senses the next day and I'm like, hey, guys, we need to shut that shit down. They're like, but you were just doing that yesterday. And you're like, yeah, I was. So you can remember this. You have this secret magic spell in your pocket at all times. And I say spell kind of in jest, but not really. Your words hold a lot of power. Right? Right. A lot of people, marketing, social media, all this stuff makes you feel like you have to make a decision now. When that, you know, your baby's dad or baby mom pisses you off or your spouse pisses you off, your kid pisses you off, the bank teller fucked you over, something happened, and it's easy to go, I'm going to fucking get them. But then when we look at the situation as a whole and go, Would that be serving my best self? Would that be serving me the best in the long run? No. Making people feel bad and making people scared of me and acting out and maybe doing something that is breaking the law or whatever. It's like, look at all these ramifications I'm going to face. All because in one moment, I'm going to allow the same charge of energy to flow through my brain. When if you've heard this message, now you know you can stop it and make another choice. Now, this is not to say that if you feel depressed, you can make the choice to not be depressed. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about decisions in everyday life. You can be depressed and make the choice to get out of bed. As difficult as that may feel, you can make that choice. I had to make take a hard look in the mirror. I was starting to dwindle away physically. I think you guys might be able to see. Go back and look at me like six months ago. I was dwindling away. I was unhealthy. I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't eating. I wasn't moving my body. I was sitting in the studio all the time, scrolling phones and making clips and doing shit. And I wasn't living any sort of life. And I'm going, what the fuck? I'm trying to invest in my mental health. I'm trying to invest in my spirituality. But I feel so bad. Something in my head goes, make a different decision tomorrow. Do something different tomorrow. Get out of the house. So then I started my nature walks. Guys, moving your body will do so much for your decision-making skills. And this is from someone who has always struggled with impulse control. Get out first thing in the morning and get all this excess energy out of your body. Get it the fuck out. Why? Because then it's not going to run rampant through your brain. Especially if you already know you deal with intrusive thoughts. Intrusive thoughts are just a traffic jam on the highway of your neuro circuit wiring of your brain. We have to figure out. I'm not, and again, this is all about getting your voice back. I'm not listening to that thought today. The one that tells me I'm not good enough. The one that tells me I'm sick. The one that tells me people abandon me because I'm no good. I don't listen to that voice right now. And again, some of you are afraid to go to war with yourself because people have told you that talking to yourself is crazy. Learn to fucking talk to yourself because you are always talking to you. Thoughts, inner dialogue, intrusive thoughts, that's you talking to you. You, 
as the one who is going to act in your life, the main character energy, whatever you guys want to call it these days, that's the one that's going to suffer the consequences if you don't start putting an actual voice to yourself and going, I am not listening to this negative self-talk today. These thoughts that have ruined every second of my previous days, not today. Why? I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm proclaiming that not today. See what happens. See what happens. Watch. One of the best things I ever learned to do was watch interception. Interception is the feelings and sensations going on within you. Extraception would be sensations and things going on externally outside your body. Learn to pay attention to your interceptions, your your feelings as emotions are processing, as anger is building. It's a physical feeling anger that you feel somewhere here. And as adrenaline grows, your throat tightens and you can physically feel it. Feel it. Let yourself feel it. That doesn't mean you have to act immediately. When you're so mad that you want to grab your phone and motherfuckers, uh, you want to, uh, you just can't help it. You have to tell somebody how the fuck you feel, right? Feel that. Feel it. Sit with it. Oh, it's scary. You don't know. Is my heart going to fucking explode? My shoulders are all up here. I'm fucking relax them. Drop them down. Get them down here. Fucking be in the corner of a fight. Fucking roll them bitches out, man. Relax. Breathe. All right, man. It still sucks. Whatever you're going through still sucks. It still sucks. It could suck. Feel that. Now, instead of being angry and where something sucking kind of feel it's here. Ah. Man, that just doesn't feel good. My legs kind of get weak. My hands start to kind of feel weak and shaky. Oh, man. But if you if you allow that, see how we've already processed? Two. And then you can go, ah, oh, I didn't die. I didn't die from that as upset as I was. I was so upset. Look at me now. I'm here. I'm good. I didn't hurt anybody. I didn't hurt anybody's feelings. Nobody's mad at me. I don't have to pay anything back. I don't have to pay for any damages. I don't have to fucking respackle a wall. I didn't throw shit. I didn't traumatize my kids. I'm not in legal trouble. Whoa. And look at this. I hold all this power still because I didn't react. I hold the power to make a new decision. Act a different way today. Be a different person. Start on the journey of being the person that I inside feel like I should be. Calm, nice, kind, loving, generous, patient, creative. When you get rid of all this stuff, all this hardness, all this shell that you carry around, not only do you start making better decisions, but you're going to start loving the life you live because you realize that you are in control of it. And then you're going to start to actually create a life. You're going to go, oh, if I could control my emotions, that means I can also control my actions. Well, instead of thinking about hiking in the mountains, let me put pen to paper and schedule a day to go hike and create content and do that. Like whatever your thing is that you've been telling yourself forever that you need to be doing that you're not doing and you're a piece of shit because now you're not doing it, but you know you should be doing it. You can get off that hamster wheel by just starting to do it. I didn't say you have to start doing it correctly. I didn't have to say you start doing it well. You just have to start doing it. If you start doing it, that hamster wheel stops and it gives you something else to think about, which is, okay, let me review the first thing I did. Ah, audio sucked. Let me change that. Thumbnail was no good. Let me do this. And then you go, wow, I have a project I'm working on. I'm on what? A journey. A happy one. One that I created. One that I never thought was possible. Wow, magic is real in life because I can change. And that's where the magic of my life truly does come is if I can change, I truly do believe anyone can change. And that's why we're on the road to redemption again. 
I love you. I hope you guys will thumbs up the episode. Subscribe so that way you see when we drop stuff. If you want to see it right away, hit that little dingy bell and it'll tell you as soon as everything goes live. Know how much I love you. If you guys want to check out any of the merch, people have been asking about it quite a bit. Head on over to madmentaldesigns.com. We are um, in between seasons right now. The next line we're going to do will be in the fall. So we got a couple over there. Violently caffeinated will always stay over there. And I think maybe like early September, I might bring back the Gangster of Love for like half the month or something. But we'll check it out. Review on iTunes if you guys are listening there. Hit all the buttons on Spotify, wherever you guys are listening. Don't forget to let me know that you're listening in the comments. Send me some love. I love you. We'll see you in the next one.